Welcome everyone, I will be doing my presentation on telescopes. I will split my presentation into four parts, how it works, Lippershe, Galileo, Isaac Newton, and the present day. Before we go into the history of the telescope, I believe it's important to first understand how the telescope works. Grade 10 physics taught us that when light passes through a lens, it bends. This is because light travels slower in glass than it does in the air. Therefore, it bends towards the direction of the point where the beam of light has first touched the glass. When light passes through a convex lens, the light bends inwards as a thick part of lens is in the center, thereby bending the light towards the center. This means that light from an object can be directed towards a focus or a focal point. The points where these rays of light intersect create an image that is the exact same as the object, just closer. Once the rays have passed the focal point, early astronomers then used the second concave lens to straighten the light rays. The result of this was an image that is larger and closer than the real object. This was how telescopes functioned. Part 2. Lippershey and Galileo The exact origins of the telescope are unclear. However, the first time a telescope was mentioned in the annals of history was in 1608 by a Dutch spectacle maker named Hans Lippershey. He filed for a patent for a device that brought distant objects closer. His patent was however denied because this device was thought to be too easily replicable. Despite this, Lippershey was able to sell large quantities of his spyglass to the Dutch government so that they could see distant enemy ships and soldiers who could not yet be seen with the unaided eye. The famous Galileo heard about this instrument that could magnify distant objects by up to three times. He was intrigued, so he studied its mechanisms. Galileo was able to build his own telescope within a week. By adjusting the distance between the two lenses, Galileo was able to make his telescope so that he could magnify foreign objects by a factor of 20. It was using this telescope that Galileo was able to see the surface of the moon. He immediately saw that the moon was not perfect and smooth which contradicted the teachings of the Catholic Church, who said that the moon was a perfect creation of God. He found even more imperfections in the sky, such as black spots on the sun, appendages on Saturn, as well as the phases of Venus, which resembled the waxing and waning of our own moon. Though Galileo had not entirely dismissed Copernicus' heliocentric model, he had not completely believed it either. It is said that it was only after Galileo saw the phases of Venus in October of 1610 that he fully accepted the heliocentric model. It can thus be said that Galileo's opposition to the Catholic Church's teachings were solidified by this event. It is my belief that humans are only strong because we know how to use the tools we have. It is said that the condor is the most energy-efficient animal in terms of distance per calorie. However, when humans are riding a bike, we become the most energy efficient creature because our bikes are able to redirect our energy input so that no energy is wasteful. Similarly, humans have a weak eyesight that can barely see something 20 feet away. It is therefore only when we have tools available that we can make clear observations of planets thousands of kilometers away. Though the scientific revolution led to a shift from the faith in the Catholic Church to a focus on empiricism and logic, such a shift is not impactful if people couldn't collect data to oppose the Catholic faith on their own. I believe that the telescope was one of the inventions that created a great impact on the people during the scientific revolution, as it allowed for them to gather knowledge about outer space, which for the longest time they had no way of collecting information other than from the words of the Catholic Church. Part 3 Isaac Newton. Between the times of Galileo and now, there was really only one great alteration that was made to the telescope. That alteration was made by Sir Isaac Newton in 1668 when he created the reflecting uh, telescope. Newton was only able to do this because he had a good understanding of light and how white light was made up of several wavelengths. You see, Up to then, people tried to increase the power of their telescopes by making the lens of their telescopes bigger. This method only worked up to a certain point. Beyond this certain point, the images became blurry. This was due to two principles, chromatic and spherical aberrations of light. Spherical aberration meant that light refracted from the outer areas of lenses bent more inwards, further distorting the image when larger lenses were used. Additionally, different frequencies of light bend at slightly different angles from each other. 
larger lenses made these differences more pronounced. This caused different frequencies of light to intersect at different points, thus distorting the image. These phenomena were congruent with Newton's theory that white light was a conglomerate of different colors. Isaac Newton saw that mirrors had the same ability to concentrate beams of light at a specific focal point, also creating the image at that focal point. He used this property to create even more powerful telescopes that had up to 50 times magnification. These were called reflecting telescopes. Previously, the telescope was used to further Galileo's understanding of science by allowing him to see distant planets like Venus. However, in the case of Isaac Newton, he used science to further enhance the capabilities of his telescope. This demonstrates the beauty of science and possibly why so many people were drawn to it. Due to its empirical nature, individuals can start from different axioms of reason and still reach the same conclusion as someone else and therefore further building on these sets of knowledge. Part 4. The Present Day Today, telescopes are used to look deep into space. We have telescopes that are 6 million times stronger than the human eye. We have also discovered that Earth's atmosphere also distorts light, limiting the resolution of ground-based telescopes. On Christmas Day of 2021, we launched the strongest telescope yet, the James Webb Telescope, into space. It is projected that the James Webb Telescope is so strong that we'll be able to see the first stars formed from the Big Bang. As I previously said, humans are weak, but our tools can make us strong. It is only when we use our intelligence to develop instruments that can magnify our capabilities that we're able to look into the sky and see for ourselves what really is there. If not for the invention of the telescope, Galileo may not have ever been fully convinced of Copernicus's heliocentric model. At the same time, the telescope is what will soon allow us to see for ourselves whether God or the Big Bang created the universe. With that, I will end my presentation. Thank you all for listening. Any questions?